Welcome back everyone to complete TSA placement series with C++. In the last lecture, we completed with our array class and in this particular lecture, we will look at one sorting algorithm and from this lecture onwards, we will look at sorting algorithms, one algorithm per lecture. So what are we waiting for? Let's begin with our lecture on bubble sort right away. What is sorting? Sorting is just arranging items in ascending or descending order. So you must have seen the sort by option in your file explorer. Okay, so one example of sorting is in file explorer or we can say application of sorting. Okay, one more application, popular application can be seen in e-commerce websites where the items are sorted for, by prices from high to low or low to high or according to ratings from high to low or low to high and we also we also have sorting in several food delivery apps so sorting is very important right it, it, it's it's a really important uh, thing when it comes to sorting when it comes to e-commerce website or when it comes to food delivery apps and these all sorting algorithms that are applied in all the things in all the applications need to be very very time efficient because even if the sorting algorithm is a millisecond late we have chances of losing our potential customers so yes sorting is a really important topic and do do listen to all the lectures this lecture and all the coming upcoming lectures very carefully so yes this was about sorting and a little bit of in introduction of upcoming lectures in the series now let us begin with a very simple type of sorting algorithm that is bubble sort so uh, you must have seen bubbles so how do bubbles uh, bubbles arrange themselves the heavier bubble will automatically move down and the lighter bubble will automatically come up or it will bubble up in the water so bubble sort is something like that suppose we have an array okay let us say that we have this array 5 1 3, 2 and 4 and we need to sort things. So what does the bubble sort do? It compares two adjacent elements and if we have a element with higher value first then it will swap both the elements. So this is how this was about ascending bubble sort. If we want to have descending bubble sort then it will compare two elements and check if the first element is lower then it will swap both the elements okay so over here over here let us say let us say we have first iteration okay first iteration over where what do we do is we compare these two okay so is 5 greater than 1 yes it is so the it will swap it will be swapped so we will have 5 1 3 2 and 4 over here let me just rub this and write 4 now it's the turn for next two elements so this and this so it will check is 5 greater than 3 yes it is greater than 3 so it will swap both the elements now it will check for 5 and 2 next two elements so uh, is 5 greater than 2 yes it is so it will swap both the elements now it will check between 5 and 4 so is 5 greater than 4 yes it is so the resultant array now becomes 1, 3, 2, 4 and 5. So yes, this is the result we have got in one iteration or first iteration. Is this array sorted? No, it is not. But, but you can see that the largest element is at its right position. That is 
last position okay now we want to move the second largest element to the second largest position yes 4 is second largest element and it is already over there okay it is already over there by arrangement but the array or the computer doesn't know it so we need to have one more iteration okay we need to have a second iteration let us have a second iteration in second iteration we will compare these two is one greater than three no is three greater than two yes it is so we have one two three four and five okay let me just write it over here one two three four and five yep yes it is sorted but the computer still doesn't know it needs to move okay it needs to move so yes it will check then it will check for three and four then it will check it will not check for four and five because now it knows that five is at its position as it is at its right position so we have a partition okay over here all the elements are sorted over here the all the elements aren't sorted now afterwards first it will check for one and two then it will check for two and three then it will check for three and four okay so now now that we have last and second last element at their right position the partition moves backwards so over here the things are sorted over here the things are not okay now it will move to the third iteration okay it will move to third iteration it will check adjacent element and if we have a higher value first and lower value afterwards then it will swap both the elements very simple right exactly so now let us look at the time complexity okay time complexity and let us analyze this particular algorithm so one parameter of analyzing is time complexity now you you see over here over here we had for five elements for array of five elements we had four passes or we had four iterations okay four iterations and in each iterations okay and in each iteration we had four comparisons okay we had four comparisons so it will take around it would take around n square time and thus the time complexity over here is big o of n square okay we would have two for loops and one will be outside and another one will be inside the for loop so we will have a nested for loop and thus the time complexity over here will be big o of n square and now let us check about the a word we have a very common term that is adaptability so what is adaptability adaptability or if we say that an algorithm is adaptable then we mean that the algorithm will take less time for lesser input or a simpler input then for a complex input suppose the array is sorted but the computer doesn't know that it is sorted okay over here over here you see that the machine doesn't know that the array is sorted still it will compare both the elements and still it will run for big o of n square time so is it adaptable no this algorithm is not adaptable yes we can make it more adaptable we will talk about this in later part of the lecture so yes it is not adaptable now we talk about the stability so is the algorithm stable okay what do you mean by stable suppose we have this array six one three six and seven okay so we have two six over here this one and this one okay so in the sorted result this should come first and this should come 
later on and this is known as stability of the algorithm if the values or if the position of these two six are swapped then the algorithm is not stable so yes we need to look for stability also so is it stable yes it is because we only swap elements okay the positions change positions of number change when we swap elements and we only swap elements when one is less than other and thus the algorithm the bubble sort algorithm is stable so we have uh, we have one more parameter okay we have space complexity space complexity so space complexity will be big o of 1 it will take a constant space because we are we are changing the array in place and thus we have talked about four things over here we have talked about time complexity then we have adaptability then we have stability and at last we discussed about space complexity okay so yes these are the four parameters now let us talk about algorithm okay we'll just talk about algorithm or pseudocode so what we will do we will take a loop okay for i from 0 to n where n is the size of array and n is exclusive over here and then we will take another loop over here okay that loop will start from okay j will start from i okay it will start from i or we can say it will start from 0 to n minus i minus 1 okay and this will be exclusive why n minus i minus 1 because in the first iteration one number will be sorted okay that will be the last number so we don't need to move to the last index and thus we have written n minus i minus 1 and then over here inside the loop we will check if arr if arrj is greater than arr j plus 1 we will swap arrj and arrj plus 1 so yes this is our pseudo code now let us move to move to our vs code and write our solution okay so here we are into our vs code i have already written the code for printing an array so this is the logic of printing an array and i have uh, an array which consists of seven elements let me just uh, run the loop and and let us see the array okay so i will just zoom out uh, over here okay so yes this is our array now let us write our code for bubble sort so we will write wide bubble sort bubble sort we aren't returning the array because we are actually doing in place uh, update okay so we are updating our array in place int arr and int n now let us run the for loop for int i equal to 0 i less than n i plus plus and let us run the inner for loop that is for int j equal to 0 j less than n minus i minus 1 j plus plus and over here we will write if arr j is greater than arr j plus 1 we need to swap both of them 
So for swapping, we will take a temporary variable which will be equal to ARRJ. Then ARRJ will be equal to ARRJ plus 1. At last, ARRJ plus 1 is equal to temp. So this is the swapping algorithm. This is the bubble sort algorithm. This one. And now let us apply bubble sort algorithm. So bubble sort ARR N and we will print our array. So print array ARR N and then run the code. So yes, this is our output. Let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. So our array over here, first the array was 3, 4, 1, 5, 9, 6 and 10. And now you see that our array is in sorted order. So this was about bubble sort algorithm. Let us now optimize the solution. So what can be done to optimize the solution? Over here in the past itself, we saw in, in this that the array was already sorted. Array was already sorted in the second iteration itself. And there was no need of third as well as fourth iteration. So what can be done? What if, what if we have a flag in the second iteration itself that will indicate if the array is sorted or not and if the array is not sorted then only it will proceed towards the third iteration otherwise it won't proceed to third iteration okay so yes this will be and this is a rough intuition now let us build our approach on the basis of this intuition so let us build another approach for our bubble sort algorithm First of all, we need to change our outer for loop. Okay, so outer for loop, outer for loop will now will now have an a variable. Okay, let us say, let us say the variable will be size. Okay, the variable will be size, not the actual size of the array but the size that needs to be sorted after each iteration the size that needs to be sorted will decrease okay so first of all we'll have first iteration in which the last element will be sorted leaving behind the n minus 1 element so now the size will be decreased to 1 and this way this way we will have a size parameter so we will have a for loop okay we'll have a for loop where size will be equal to n minus 1 size will be equal to n minus 1 and we will write if the size is greater than or equal to 0 okay size should be greater than or equal to 0 and we will also have one more condition okay We'll also have one more condition. Let us talk about that condition later on. But we will decrease our size. Okay, we'll decrease our size upon each iteration. Okay, because the unsorted size of unsorted elements will keep on decreasing. Okay, so yes, this is our size. And now what will be our i? Our i will run from 0 to size minus 1. It will run from 0 to size minus 1 and rest will be as it is if ARR i is greater than ARR i plus 1. Then we need to swap. Okay, we need to swap the element. Let me move up a little bit. Okay. So yes, if, if ARR this is greater than this then we need to swap both the elements. Okay. So, yes, we have written the solution. Now, let us optimize it. What can we done to optimize it? Okay. So, over here, over here, we will take one more flag or we will take one more boolean that is R swapped. Okay. 
that will tell us that our elements swapped or not or our elements unsorted or not so yes if r swapped is true okay or if r elements unsorted is true then only it will proceed further so in ampersand ampersand okay in our second condition for continuing our loop we will have r swapped parameter equal to true so size greater than zero ampersand ampersand r swapped then we'll have size minus minus so it will check for two conditions now let us see where this r swapped variable would change okay so over here over here first of all we'll assume we'll assume that the elements are sorted okay they are not unsorted and thus we will write r swapped r swapped equal to false we'll write r swapped equal to false but but if we come over here whoops sorry we'll not write it over here but before the for loop okay so before this iteration itself we'll write our condition so it will be over here r swapped r swapped if r swapped over here will be false now if at all this r swapped comes inside over here inside this if condition then it should be true okay it should be true we know now know that the elements are unsorted they are not in sorted order and then thus r swapped should be true okay so now what if the the pointer doesn't come inside the if condition then the elements are already sorted okay and our r swapped will be false and thus it will stop in the next iteration the the execution will stop in the next iteration itself and this is how we make our bubble sort algorithm more adaptable so let us move to our visual studio code and let us write our optimized bubble sort so over here we have bubble sort and below we will have optimized bubble sort optimized bubble sort which will accept array as well as n as the array size okay now we will have we will have size okay so for for int size equal to size equal to n minus 1 size greater than or equal to 0 size let, let me just write it over here size greater than or equal to 0 ampersand ampersand will also have one more parameter so let me have a boolean over here r swapped r swapped or let me say r unsorted r unsorted which is currently true okay we'll assume that it is true so we'll have at least one iteration and over here we'll write r unsorted okay and size will decrease upon each iteration now over here our unsorted will be equal to false so we will assume that our array is already sorted and then we'll run the loop for int i equal to 0 okay i less than size minus 1 size minus 1 i plus plus and over here we will write if arr i is if arr i is greater than arr i plus 1 then we will swap both the elements so let us swap them arr i equals sorry int temp equals arr i so we'll have a temporary variable int temp which will be equal to arr i then arr i will be equal to arr i plus 1 at last arr i plus 1 will be equal to 
temp and as we have swapped it the elements are not sorted and thus our sorted our unsorted sorry our unsorted boolean will be true over here okay so we have we have written our optimized bubble sort and instead of bubble sort we'll write over here optimized bubble sort okay we'll write optimized bubble sort and now let us also have one count variable over here okay int count which is equal to zero and it will increase in this for loop so i will just write count plus plus okay and at last at last we will have a print statement see out this algorithm or we can say optimized bubble sort took count number of iterations so it took so and so iterations okay so yes this is our code now let us let us also have a count variable over here i have already introduced the count variable so over here we'll have count equal to zero and here the size of uh, the value of the count will increase by one okay now let us print it over here okay let me just copy this statement and print it right over here so count uh, bubble sort okay bubble sort bubble sort will take count number of iterations so yes we have written our optimized bubble sort over here also we have written optimized bubble sort first of all let us see if optimized bubble sort uh, gives correct output so okay over here we have count does not name a type okay okay so we need to check where we went wrong okay so we did not go wrong anywhere actually we had to restart the visual studio code and now you see when i click on running the application it runs okay so over here we see that the array is sorted one three four five six nine ten okay so now now you see that operations this this took 12 iterations okay let me also give end l over here in optimized bubble sort as well as bubble sort so over here let me type end l okay and l and i will type end l over here okay so it took the optimized bubble sort took 12 operation now what about bubble sort so let me just write bubble sort over here and let me print it out okay i will just print out over here and you see that it took 21 iterations okay it took 21 and iteration 1.5 times large than optimized bubble sort now what if the array is already sorted okay so let us uh, let us sort our array first okay i will print welcome my back array. everyone to complete okay. dsa placement or series with c++ my in the last first. lecture first of all, we I'll completed sort it with, with our array class bubble and in sort this particular lecture we will look time at and one then sorting algorithm and from this my lecture array onwards, and then we will look at sorting algorithm one algorithm sort as well as per lecture. Uh, bubble so okay, what are we so waiting will, for uh, let's begin with our lecture on bubble sort right away first arrn and bubble sort is already present over here okay and then at last print the array so let us see what if the array is sorted okay if the array is already sorted then it should take less number of iterations right so let us see okay so i am just running my code and over here we have our output okay so after this array okay optimized bubble sort it took 12 iterations it is very less okay then the array was already sorted but in an already sorted array also bubble sort took 21 iterations while optimized bubble took a uh, bubble sort only took five iterations 
and this is the beauty of optimized bubble sort that it is more adaptable okay so if array is already sorted or if we get sorted array after some iterations then we do not need to complete the further iterations we can stop over there itself so yes it takes less computational time so this was about bubble sort in the next lecture we will learn about the selection sort till then keep helping and keep learning